Howard sent me an email and said, here are 11 questions I want you to answer that the um, participants of the uh, uh, conference would be interested in hearing your presentation on. So I dutifully wrote out the answers. And um, yesterday, sitting through the workshops and having dinner with John and his crew last night, I, um, I came back and started thinking about my answers. And um, I realized that without a frame of reference, the answer is irrelevant because collectively we all come from different worlds. We, none of us live in a static world. Every day that we go into our job, something's different. The dynamics of the world today are so, so kinetically different that your principles of operating um, kind of have to be tested every single day. So each of us has its own operating, it's, it's his or her his own operating system. And uh, I, I mean that in every sense of the term, that you don't think about it, um, but you should, and you need to manifest itself to the organization that you're running. The first question I think that you have to answer for yourself is whether you're a manager or a leader. How you approach your job is significantly different depending on how you view yourself. If you start from the premise that you are a leader, then you start assuming additional responsibilities that you hadn't thought about. It doesn't mean that occasionally during the course of a week or a month that you don't become a manager because management is about process. And if you can get hung up on process, and stop being a leader. But if you truly believe that you're a leader, how you approach that problem will be completely different. Because in Jack Sheehan's world, there are kind of four rules that sit in the back of my mind that I'm gonna just go over with you just so that you kind of understand where Jack Sheehan comes from. The first rule that I have is that if you stand still, you're dead. Now, where that comes from is a scout sniper that worked for me um, in Quezon in Vietnam in 1968 during the Tet Offensive. And so he had about 135 kills. His name was Gunny Hancock. And so what that means to me and what that means in every single day is that if you come to work and do the same thing every single day and don't take time to measure the world that you're living in, the world is going to overcome what you're trying to do. This is like a basic biological theory. Complex organisms that have little tentacles on the outside, sensors, sense that the world is changing. The bio environment they live in is changing, chemically, whatever have you. They try to send signals into the center, to the core. And the more complex the organization is, the, the more diluted the information becomes. Simple organisms like cockroaches survive because they sense the change in the environment they adapt over millions of years. So my point is that you as a manager or leader, and again, you have to decide which one you are, have to sense the world that you're living in. Is it changing? If it is changing, you need to change with it, which inputs on you an obligation to read, think, and participate. The second rule is that you never know how much authority you have until you exceed it. Now, this is a simple rule, especially if you're a leader. In the old days, before cell phones and all those kinds of things in the internet, if you sent a project manager out to some different part of the world, he was on his own. That project manager made decisions based on his knowledge and his leadership responsibilities. Today, because of internet and instant communications, we are neutering leaders and they're afraid to make a decision. So if you're a real leader and you go somewhere and you see something, you have to decide whether you're gonna lead or become a manager. Because if you go there and see something that needs to be corrected, if your first impulse is, I'm gonna go back and check with HR or I'm gonna go back and check with the legal department, you've missed an opportunity. If you're a real leader, you go fix the problem that you see then you go back and tell HR that you did it and listen to them whine. <laughs> or you go tell a lawyer, figure out how to make this right. Because if you allow them, the HR department, the legal department to run your world, you've stopped being a leader. 
The third rule is that two-thirds of the available time has to be given to the person or the organization that's executing the mission. This is the classic tension between a commander or a manager leader and the staff. If you have a major event coming up, what the staff will do is they will get consumed with answering what if questions. So they'll spend most of the time that's available doing their work and they'll come in, they'll give you a brief. And then they'll hand it off to somebody who has executed, has to execute it, and invariably they only have two or three days. So the rule I use is that, okay, we have two weeks before we have to do this. Get the person in who's gonna execute it and say, okay, here's your mission. You develop the concept, the staff will support you. Now, what that does, it forces the staff to work for the person who's executing it, as opposed to working for you. The last rule is that I don't do orangutans. What does that mean? Every single one of us that has a staff, a group of people, whether it's one secretary or 20 people, whatever it is, usually sometime during the course of the week, they come in, they say, Jack, boy, I got this problem. You know, this isn't working, that's going on, yuck, 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 yuck. And so they're, what they're doing is they're bleeding all over your desk. What they're really trying to do is transfer their problem to your inbox. And so you patiently listen, and if you can help them out with advice, please do so. But at the end of the conversation, you say to them, take your orangutan back, and when you come up with a solution, come in and see me. But I don't own your problem. I'm paying you to solve the problem. Now, you can be constructive in your advice and all that kind of stuff. But if you start allowing your staff or anybody else to come in and give you problems, your workload doubles.